Good morning, children. So, again, a Saturday. And again, time for a story. Now, today, you know, I've got this book called 50 Greatest Short Stories for Children. So, it's a compilation of 50 great stories from around the world. And the story that I'm going to read for you today is The Cat and the Mouse. You may have heard of the story, but you listen to the story carefully. Okay. This is a tale, T A L E, of a wily cat and a foolish mouse. So, this is the story of a cunning cat and a foolish mouse. The mouse lived in a bare mouse hole under the pulpit, under the pulpit in the church. The cat lived on an old cushion in the vestry. They had met on several occasions. The mouse usually whisking herself away very fast to the safety of her hole. So the moment the cat would come, the mouse would run away. She did not look, she did not like the look of the cat's claws. So the cat had very sharp claws. But one day, the cat called the mouse to its house. Mouse and house, right? Mean? Miss Mouse, a purry voice said, Cat spur, no? Why don't you and I set up home together? We could live in the bell tower and look after each other. We could share our food too. The mouse thought about this carefully. She had never been fond of cats ever since her great grandfather had been supper for the farm tomcat one cold frosty night. So her grandfather in a cold night had gone out and the tomcat just ate him up. But she could see that there would be benefits. The cat has a nice smile on his face. So she agreed. They put their savings together and bought a pot full of fat for the winter. So they bought a pot of fat. Fat means the fat that comes out of from the bodies of the animals, right? The cat said he would hide it away safely under the altar where no one ever went. And so it was done. So in the church you have an altar, you know, where the priest stands, right? So they hid it there. They both promised not to touch it until the weather became really bad. The mouse went about her business quite happy in her new home. Although she found the stairs a wearisome business. But the cat could not stop thinking about the pot of fat. So he thought of a plan. Miss Mouse, my cousin had just had a kitten, he said looking at the mouse with his green eyes. And she would like me to be a god cat. I should like to go to the christening. Would you mind? Christening is when they give a name to the baby. Not at all, Mr. Cat, said the mouse. I have plenty to do today. But the wicked cat went straight to the pot of fat and ate the top off. Then he went to sleep for the rest of the day. When it was evening, he stretched and strolled back up to the bell tower. Ah. Did you have a nice time? asked the mouse. Oh yes, very nice, said the not very nice cat. And what is the kitten called? Top off, replied the cat. Top off? What a strange name, said the mouse. That is a very strange name. Still, I suppose cats have different family names. And she went on with her work. All went quietly for a few days. But then the cat had great longings for the pot of fat again. So he went to the mouse. If 
I find I have another new God kitten. Would you mind if I went to the christening? Said the cat, his green eyes half closed. Cats are very lazy. Another God kitten, said the mouse. My, my, you do have a big family. And the beastly cat slunk off and ate up half the pot of fat. When he sauntered back up the stairs that night, and the mouse was waiting. Well, how did it all go, he said. What is this kitten to be called? Half empty, replied the cat. Half empty, said the mouse. I've never heard such a thing before. But the cat was asleep, a secret smile, twitching her whiskers. Ah, well, as you can imagine, it was not long before that greedy cat wanted some fat again. Miss Mouse, just imagine, I've got another god kitten. I should go to this christening too, said the cat. Miss Mouse thought it's all very strange. But she was a kind creature and waved the cat off to yet another christening. The cat, of course, just scuttled, scuttled downstairs, slid under the altar and licked the pot of fat quite clean. He came back very late that night. Now, what strange name did your family give this new kitten? Asked the mouse. And the mouse was a little cross also. She had a headache from all the noise in the tower when the bells rang. All gone, said the cat. Top off, half empty and now all gone. The mouse said in disbelief. I don't believe it. Well, I'm very glad I'm not a member of your family. I couldn't be doing with such weird names. And she went to sleep with her paws over her ears. There were no more christenings for a while. The weather became colder and colder and the mouse began to think of the little pot of fat hidden under the altar. Miss Cat, she said one frosty morning, I think it is time we collected our pot of fat. I'm looking forward to a lick. We will see about that, thought the cat. But he patted downstairs behind the mouse. She reached under the altar and brought out the pad, but of course, when she looked in it, it was all empty. What a foolish mouse I have been. Now I see what a wicked cat you have been. Top off, half empty and all gone indeed. Such is the way of cats, said the greedy cat. And he put out a paw to grab the mouse, but she was too quick for him and dived back into a dear little mouse hole under the pulpit. Never. Did she trust cats ever, ever? I hope you like the story, children. Hmm? Now, there would be a vocabulary exercise that would follow this video. So, you'll have to focus on that as well. Thank you.